Carsten Brzezewski, senior economist at ING, joins us live now from Brussels. Carsten, good to talk to you. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Uh, well, so we're hearing there from Nicolas Sarkozy that we'll get some sort of agreement by the end of the month on well, a number of fairly big issues, challenges that the Eurozone has been facing for at least a year and a half now. Do you get the impression that the Eurozone leaders have a sense of urgency about what's going on here because they always seem to be running one step behind. I think they, they have an urgency of that something has to has to be done. Um, but also I think yesterday was nothing more than, than a feel good stop over and I'm I, I'm I'm skeptical that we will really get this all encompassing package by the end of the month because that's very short and we all know that the, the devil is very often in the details, especially in this sovereign debt crisis. All encompassing pa package by the end of the month or the beginning of next month rather, but you're saying Carsten there is no silver bullet. There is no silver bullet, and I really hope that, that politicians are now aware that this quest for a silver bullet needs to stop. We have a couple of ingredients out there, which is bank recapitalization, which is a Greek debt restructuring, and which is also giving leverage to the EFSF. They need to work on these three ingredients, on these three elements, to find a solution for Greece. But here again, devil is in the detail. All right, so what are we likely to get then at the beginning of next month? Are we going to see a a multi-pronged approach on these three things or what should they be prioritizing right now? Well, I think we're going to get this, this three-pronged approach. I, I think we want to get some guidelines for, for national recapitalization of banks. We're, we're going to get more of this voluntary private sector involvement, read a Greek debt restructuring. And we should also get an answer to how the EFSF can get the leverage to enable it to really provide liquidity to a country like Spain mm. or Italy if need be. But Germany's against that. Germany's against it, but I think there is, there is no alternative. So a bank recapitalization cannot be a substitute for a higher EFSF. All right, so you say that we'll get something on the banks. You said on a national level. Do you mean that it will, you're expecting uh, cash injections by individual countries as, a, as opposed to a Europe-wide approach? Yeah, because I think that, that Germany is very hesitant to use the rescue fund, to use the EFSF to provide uh, capital for, for example, French banks. So I think that, that Germany is trying everything they can to keep it at the national level first, which means guidelines, but national governments have to implement it. And will the same guidelines apply to, to all European banks? That's what you would wish for. Um, I think the lessons of 2008, 2009 are that it's very hard to come up with really European guidelines that are implemented by all national governments. Well, I mean, even, I mean, are we likely to see, so you're saying that we're not going to see a collective cash injection through the EFSF. I'm just wondering then how effective these recapitalizations will be. That's the big risk. Uh, and I think it's a, but, but you cannot use the EFSF because um, otherwise the EFSF would also be out of money and had no money left for, for giving liquidity aid to Spain or Italy. So I think you have to do it outside of the EFSF. Of course, the big risk is that this is not credible, that every country does what it wants and that it does not increase confidence in the, in the European banking system. Well this, is presumed, well, this is a scenario that I'm sure Eurozone policymakers will obviously want to avoid. You, you're describing there something quite chaotic. And I'm also wondering then about other risks on a national level. If governments are injecting cash into their own banks, what does that mean for their own level of debt and indeed their credit ratings? Exactly. I think th this is the big risk, but this also shows that I think you, you should also f tackle first the, uh, the problem of the sovereigns before you start tackling the, uh, the bank recapitalization. Because in the end, you're, you're now trying to tackle the, the consequence, a kind of second round effect, while maybe it would even be better to retackle tackle the sovereign problem. All right. Thanks very much. Kostin Brzezewski, senior economist at ING. Good to talk to you.